Hey Root, Stones, and Bones folks, it's Hillary, and I'm here live at my old early 1900 singer um, Red Eye tonight. Uh, I tend to notice that it has a better stitch when um, using something, uh, sewing something thick, like a thicker project. So tonight, we are working on zipper pouches. Okay, so here's one that I made. They have, hey Elisa, they have uh, zipper tabs, which are optional. This is what it will look like if you do not add them to the ends. It'll just be very plain. Um, and I'm also gonna show you guys um, how to do boxed corners, or how I do boxed corners. There's a lot of different a lot of different ways to skin a cat, is that the saying? I don't know. Um, so this is the bag we're making tonight, the exact one with this fabric in the liner. Okay, so it has zipper tabs, uh, boxed corners, a lovely liner, really nice top stitching here, and it's just really functional. I like the tabs because um, it kind of gives you a little more to hold on to. Um, some of the options you can you know put a piece of ribbon off at the end so you could have something to hold on to you could even put it you know uh, you know smush it in between here and you'd have a tab to hold on to there's a lot of places you can go with the zipper pouch um, and I like the the this is about two inch box corners and I kind of like how that stands a little bit more so this is similar to what we are doing tonight that just has my notes in there um, so I can show you how nice that looks okay so what can I tell you about what's going on here and going in the shop while I wait for some more folks to pop on um, so our last tutorial was the unsponge and I did that up in the cabin um, if you guys have not joined our crafters group crafters of the curious and divine um, it's a really wonderful safe space to share things that move you in spirit like makes you happy you want to craft you want to sew um, there's been some really interesting stuff like uh, beautiful felted flowers um, there was a raccoon foot magnet that someone made that was really brilliant and different um lots of really fun interesting things okay so join crafters of the curious and divine maybe elisa can pop a uh what do you call that url is that what you call it? a link let's say link pop a link down to that that's where you will find the unsponges um free tutorial and the free tutorial for this tonight so it's a pdf you go in it's under the files in our group I hope you join again that's crafters of the curious and divine um, so you'll find the PDF under the files and you can just follow along again I'm going to show you sort of two different steps one way with zipper tabs and boxed corners or you can omit the zipper tabs and boxing the corners and this is what you will have a very plain very square zipper pouch which is perfect if that's what you if that's what you want I like I like the inside of this one so that one's it's really fun as well okay um, but there's just a few simple steps and why not right what else are we doing Friday night okay so let's talk about um, what we need for our project cheers everybody how's everyone doing hi Jenny hey everybody it's wine o'clock. Yes, it's wine o'clock. Mm. Why not? Okay, so for this project, and again, you can find this free tutorial PDF in our crafters group. I hope you guys join, and I hope Elisa can drop a link for us so we know where to go. You know where to go. Um, for your zipper pouch, you will need two outer fabric of your choice this measures nine by seven I like to use some interfacing so I have already fused that onto the back of my outer um, fabric so you have two of those so the interfacing is not 
100% necessary. It does help the bag hold shape better. And if you are gonna do the boxed corners, like I showed, it does help keep the bag with more form, okay? So then you need two nine by seven of the inner or liner fabric. You will need one nine inch zipper you know, of, of your choice. I mean, metal is harder to sew over than the, than the plastic, obviously. Um, and I will show you a really quick trick to size down a zipper. The zipper tabs also really are a wonderful trick. If say, okay, so this is not nine inches. This is probably like 13 or something because I have marked it um, to cut it down to nine. And the zipper tabs are really great cheat to use maybe an upcycled old zipper or you know one that you find at the thrift store that happens to be 22 inches long and you only need nine, okay? So it's gonna be nine to go the length here. And for the zipper tabs, you're gonna use one one inch by four inch piece of your matching lining fabric, all right? So let's start the first step. I know, isn't this fun? I got this really amazing um, wool pressing mat. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know if anybody uses a wool pressing mat, but I'm so thrilled about it. Okay, so we're gonna do the zipper tabs. This is what it looks like when it's finished. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so say, like me, you went to the thrift shop. I don't know if this is from the thrift shop or if I bought this and it just is this right color, but it's just, you know, smaller. Okay, but we're gonna use that as a good example to size down, okay? I know you guys probably can't see me, but I wanna let you know what I'm doing here. So to make the pieces for the zipper tab, I'm gonna fold this in half for a reference. Okay, so I know that line is two inches. I know that this little line I make is one inch and I'm gonna fold in the corn the sides a half inch. Okay, I don't know if you understood that. So I'm using my iron to mark what I'm doing. So I folded it in half and then I folded it in half again, but I'm really only folding in a half inch, okay? So like I said, folded it in half for a line to measure half of that. That's a half inch, okay? So this is just a little cheat. So now, after cutting it in half, I have two perfectly li perfect little zipper tabs, all right? And I'm, I'm doing this because you want the fabric thin on the sides because later you're going to fold your zipper and sew over that which can be a little bit difficult, okay? So this is what you're working with with that little piece, okay? Now, if you do need to size down a zipper, and this is cool, um, I'm just gonna cut at the nine inches. Bye-bye. And obviously you're cutting the end, okay? I'm gonna place the zipper tab on top, matching with the edge so the fold is towards the middle of the zipper. And you can do what you like. You can use clover clips um, or pins, um, whatever works for you. Please share if you have any. Yes, share this out. Hi, Heather, how you doing tonight? Say hi, let me know what you're doing tonight. Let me know if you sew or craft. Um, we would love to hear from you. We would love you to join our group and get this free tutorial as well. Okay, that's what it's gonna look like when you pin that in. Boy, I've got a pile of stuff going here. All for later. Now, I already have my zipper foot on my machine because I was working before. You can use a regular, um, a regular foot a, or quilting foot. This is probably a quilting foot, okay, um, for this part if you'd like. But I like to get right up next to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this zipper foot. So I am going to stitch this down now. And on an old machine like this, you're gonna notice that I can't back stitch, okay? So 
um, if you're using a new machine, by all means, backstitch, you can go over the actual zipper a couple times for a little more strength, and that goes later on too if you wanna go over some, um, what you think might be weak points to strengthen them, by all means do so. Um, and with a new machine, it is so much easier because you can, like I said, backstitch, but this is how you backstitch on an old machine. You lift, you flip, and you go back the other way. You follow your stitch marks, and you hope you did it right. Okay, probably. Okay. So you are going to repeat this. There you have. There you have it. I just sewed right along the edge here. Okay. And you're gonna do that to the other side. You're gonna move your zipper down and open it up because you can't possibly put it there. And it's a little bit harder to place on this side, the zipper tab, okay? But you're gonna hold this together so it's even. And I suggest, you know, doing it on a flat surface where you can put a pin in it. I would put a pin in this end. I'll show you how I do it again with the folded over half inch right here. And I would use a little pin on this end, okay? So that's how you size down a zipper if you have a really giant one, and I love zipper tabs for that, okay? So with this one, you're gonna stitch as well, and you will come up with something that, ta-da, looks like this. You'll have a zipper tab on each side. It's only one, um, one layer of fabric because you'll notice later you're going to be uh, later you're going to be stitching through a lot. Okay, so the other thing to do is just open, and the length piece right here, the little extra, there's about a quarter inch. You can trim that as well, so you're not stitching through more and more layers like that. Okay, how's everyone doing tonight? All right. Now, to get your zipper that now has these lovely tabs on it onto your fabric, I like to lay my piece. Okay, ready? I like to lay my piece down this way. You're going to take your zipper face down and I usually keep the zipper at the end. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, this placement of the zipper head will just determine, you know, where this is gonna be. And if it's, a, if it's the same thing on either side, it's not, not really gonna matter. Okay, so you are going to sandwich this. Your zipper face down, tabs facing down. Okay, you're gonna line it up. You wanna make sure this is super even. Now you're gonna take your liner so you have the top fabric, your zipper face down, your liner face, right side facing in, so the right sides are facing each other. And I like to just pick it up at the corner and make sure I'm doing a really good job lining up. I'm telling you that this part is super important, okay? And again, I think that the clover clips are really nice. Um, when using a zipper foot because they just, they pop out of the way really easily. And I don't know about you guys, but I bend a lot of needles. Is anybody else um, really horrible at bending needles? That's me, that's me. What does everyone do with their um, old needles? I have a big jar of them going. It's actually quite cool looking. Um, there's a big collection. If you don't know, if you, are new to sewing, you should be changing your needle after probably every project, or they say, you know, six to eight hours, um, which might be even a little too much. Okay. So I'm going to not, yep, enjoying a truly and watching my different, yay, cheers to you, my, my best pal, and everyone out there who is sitting and sewing. 
So we have this sandwich. I'm gonna show you a really cool zipper trick because you cannot, you cannot zip, uh, sew around the zipper head, okay? It will leave an ugly, lumpy line and then your top stitching will be way off, all right? Yep, you snap needles sometimes. You keep them on a magnet. Yeah, snapping um, needles, if you're, you, you gotta let your machine do the work too. That's really important with the zipper foot um, because with the zipper foot, I've stitched through my finger before. Like, there's, it's very open and it can be dangerous, so don't do what I did. Um, and let the machine do the work for you and you won't probably break as many needles with masks after 10 hours. Yes, yeah, see, that's just the old needle, okay? If you've been sewing for 10 hours, like, get a, get a new needle, girl, okay? So this old gal's been all cleaned and oiled, and now I'm gonna show you how I like to stitch on um, my zipper so everything is very crisp and lined up. You can see that all of my corners are matching very nicely just the way I cut it okay and I'm leaving this end open that has the zipper head I will show you why that's the zipper trick okay so with my zipper foot on my machine I don't know I don't have an additional one otherwise I'd show you guys I can pull it off later if you guys don't know what a zipper foot is it is a special foot that you do need to get very close to stitch next to the zipper um, and it will give you Let's, where's my other bags? Good grief, where'd everything go, guys? Um, it'll give you a really nice crisp edge right in there, okay? Let's go. All right, so you can see I am letting my machine doing, do the work, and you don't have to use a lot of pins. I tend to just use my hand and watch your fingers and let the machine and the foot glide right next to the zipper as you go, okay? So I'm getting towards that zipper head. Here's the trick. Let me see if I can get a little closer here so you guys can see this. Okay, so with the needle down in my project, okay, the zipper head is right here. All right, and I'm not gonna sew around that because it's gonna make a really ugly, yucky bump. All right, so with the needle in my project, I'm gonna lift up my foot. I'm going to spread apart the two layers. I'm gonna reach in so I can see the zipper upright. Magic, magic, you guys, check this out, okay? So now you're gonna get it out of the way. Just use the zipper, use the tool. Bam, so now I've moved this zipper head past my needle so I will not have that ugly bump all right and then I'm just going to put it back down and my project is staying in place because my needle is still in my project I just lifted my presser foot so now I have everything back together everything's even my zipper head is now in the back of my project and it's magic. You're gonna have a really, really nice, crisp line, okay? Here we go. Might be a little bit off on this one for some reason. It's probably because I'm chatting, doing a little more chatting than focusing. That's okay, I need a zipper pouch too. It's fun to mess things up once in a while. All right. There you have it. So I sewed all the way down my sandwiched zipper, all right? So let's see what it looks like because you're gonna flip it around and you're gonna do this on the other side exactly like this. So right now, you could, if you want, you could top stitch this right now. Um, so there you have it. So the zipper is going to be on the outside with the fabric. You have your nice zipper tabs and there's your lining fabric. Now, I want you to go to your pressing mat or ironing board, whatever it is that you like. I've got this really cool little pressing mat um, that I like a lot. Yeah, genius, right, Elisa? Seriously, I'm telling you, saved me so many headaches. I was like, why can't I get this to stop being lumpy, you know? Um, because you're 
sewing around the zipper head when you don't need to. Use the tool, take the shortcut. Um, and by all means, if any of you guys know something that will save me time, if you sew, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear um, any tips and tricks that you have. Okay. Ba -ba -da -ba. Now you're gonna do the same thing on the other side and follow those steps, sort of treating it like um, this isn't here, okay? So once again, to do the, to complete the other side, top side facing up, zipper face down, lining that up, and this time it it might seem a little awkward because um, my my zipper tab is right there. So I'm gonna open the zipper so it's at the far end, and I can do that little trick again. Okay, hope you guys liked that. I felt like a million bucks when I learned it. I'm telling you, I could have cried the ugly zippers I started out with. Ugly projects can be fun too. Okay, just getting lined up here. It really, really matters if your fabric is all matching because you are going to line all of this up again. Okay, and your liner, right side facing down, so outer fabric is facing up, your zipper is in the middle facing down, your liner is going over the top of that facing down, sandwiched in, and let's just run down this side quick. Um, so I said it before, now I have a few more people watching. I have a free tutorial for this on our in our Crafters of the Curious and Divine Facebook group. Elisa dropped a link. Thank you very much. I hope you join if you'd like the free PDF file on how to do this um, with instructions for boxed corners and this really neat zipper trick. It's all in there. There are photos. It's really very nice. Um, and we'd love to see what you're all working on as well. We're so excited. We're going to be doing um, a giveaway soon as we have reached a lot of milestones with our business and we're so happy. So I'll give you a little hint about what it is. It's, it's a lovely package for a baby. And we will see who wins that lovely giveaway. We're getting there. It's our birthdays the, uh, this coming week and next week, so we'll do a little birthday giveaway. Right, I'm at that zipper head again. Okay, so get in there, lift the fabric up, find your zipper. That's right. Needle down, press your foot up, get in between, and push, zip that zipper away. And now, you don't have to deal with that again. Boy, I'm sweating up here even though I got the AC going. Okay. We are almost halfway done this project. I promise it's much quicker when someone's not just chatting you up the whole time. Okay, so once again, we've gone across the whole length and it's gotten a little wonky on me, so. Okay, yeah, this is one that I would probably go back. Okay, so you've got your zipper tabs here. You're gonna go ahead and press. So you've got your liners on the inside with the back of your zipper now, and you have got the outer fabric in the front. Your zipper tabs look really nice, and that's what your zipper foot does. It leaves really, really nice close to the zipper stitching. So now I want you to press this really well and go down each side to top stitch. Okay, so I'll just do this side real quick. Ooh, it's gotten a little out of whack here. Okay. So once you top stitch, oh goodness, I'm skipping ahead of myself. This one's a little bit wonky. I don't know how 
my gut, so out of something slipped a little bit. That's okay. I will do this side to top stitch right next to the zipper. Still like to use the zipper foot. Okay, it really helps a lot. So we're gonna even these out so they're pressed away. And you're gonna have a really nice clean line. And watch your fingers with the zipper foot because it is rather open. You are going to do this on both sides of the zipper and it makes it look really nice and finished product. Love the group saying art makes me so happy. Me too. And I love to share with people. Okay, so this will be your top stitching. It's a little out of focus, sorry guys, okay? So that's without top stitching. You don't have to top stitch this, but look how nice and professional that side will look. And, and then you don't have to worry about getting your zipper snagged because fabric moves and it gets caught under the back. Gosh, I hate that, okay? So I want you to top stitch the other side and then it's time to make the actual pouch. To do so, you are going to match up the outer fabrics like so and you're going to match up your lining fabric, okay? And it looks a little funny because now your zipper is basically standing on end, all right? And, and this part is where you might feel a little confused, okay? Because you're going, you're going to sew over this part and you want it to be even and you want those lines to match up. So what you're going to do, if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm going to fold the zipper in half towards the lining. See how I'm gonna, see how it's flat? Okay, now I'm gonna fold it. I'm gonna fold it in half, okay? And I'm gonna make sure when I fold it in half that I'm matching up my top stitch seams and you can see the ends of my seam allowances and you can get a really good idea of where to match your things up with those guidelines. All right, and pins work okay here, but really it's rather thick, so get a clip. Um, and this is the part that you might consider weak that you'd like to maybe stitch over a few times um, when you're going around your whole project, okay? So you're matching up the outer fabrics and the lining fabrics to face the right side facing in. You're going to fold your zipper in half towards your liner Okay, and I want you to pin around your whole project. Okay, you're gonna pin around the entire project. And this is what it's going to look like when it's completely pinned. Okay, so there you can see that my zippers are folded in half with the ends or edges towards the liner. I have pinned, my project is very even all of the sides match up really well okay the next thing you want to do is make a mark on your liner for the zipper pouch and if you're gonna do boxed corners I suggest making this opening and this is to turn your project right side out after okay you need to leave this so I leave like a two to three inch depending on what you like or how big your hands are you know um, to turn it mark mark and now you're going to start at one mark and you are going to stitch all the way around and stop at the other let's do it okay so i'm gonna pop off my zipper foot for this so i can get a better cleaner line this is an old school zipper foot it has adjustments but as you can see unlike a regular foot it does not have any protection from the needle. So the needle is right out in the open out here um, where this little groove is. So you get very, very close to whatever edge you're trying to sew. That is the ultimate goal with that. 
and it's just that easy. If you don't know your machine's feet yet, I urge you to play with them. I love rolled hem feet, uh, your walking foot, all of that stuff. So I'm using about a half inch seam allowance. You can use whatever makes you comfortable. And on an old machine, also, we don't have those beautiful lines that a you know newer or digital machine has. This is what you use as a guide. Woo, woo, adjustable. I know, this is old school, right? I'm sure you're all getting a kick out of this at home. And I just happen to know on my machine where my half inch is because we hang out a lot. Hi, and oh, do you hear? Do you hear my animals? Are they loud? Probably. <sighs> okay, got that nice and tight to be right up against my fabric, and now we're going to stitch from the opening mark to the other side. And again, I can't back stitch, so this is how you back stitch on an old machine. You flip. You stitch up the same stitches and then down and around, okay? Make sure you put your press foot back down or you're gonna have like some ugly stuff going on. Remove your needles as you go. Oh dear, what did I get stuck on? Something is caught in my machine. Troubleshooting at its finest, you guys. Okay, there we go. Something got twisted and that will be okay. All right, rounding the first corner. a half inch seam allowance. I'm going around all four sides from one opening that I left open for turning. Lost that one to the other mark. How's everyone doing? Hi Emily. How are you tonight? We are making zipper pouches. I am halfway through this one. We did zipper tabs. And now I'm gonna show you guys what boxed corners are. And that is really fun. Okay, so I'm getting to where the zipper is and it is a lot thicker. So you want to be on your toes without making sure it's lined up as it approaches your machine. And often I, I just Pull my foot back from you know the pedal and I lift up my presser foot and I make sure that my project is going under well now I love this old singer because it's such a workhorse it will sew through anything and I mean anything it's like I said it's gone through my finger this machine um, but it is just wonderful it'll go through lots of denim um, there's a lot of really neat old-school attachments um, that can be really fun to play with and there's a lot of different brands at this um, period in time uh, of toys like that and I have showed some of my different feet if you look back in the videos if you want to see some cool old stuff that I've done with this machine I wouldn't say it's really an archive of that but maybe we should figure out how to label those differently okay I like to take my time and make sure that everything is being moved you're not stitching over needles don't stitch over needles you will bust your machine okay I'm approaching this zipper again and if you would like to make it stronger here you can stitch over it a couple times if you want I'm coming upon that other mark and to back stitch on the old singer red eye I have to flip and 
go back. Okay. Perfect. So if you do not want to box your corners, if you don't want a bag that stands up like this one, you can skip this step. I'm trying to find the other bags I had. I don't know what the heck. I showed you them and then they jumped out of my arm. So here they are. So if you do not want to do the box corners, skip skip the next step and you'll have a zipper pouch that is finished that looks just like this okay but i like the box corners and when i use a zipper pouch i want to be able to open it you know have it be standing get my stuff in it not have to deal with it flopping all over the place but that's just me everybody ends up finding the preference they like Okay, so we now have gone around all four corners and left the marked space open for flipping later, okay? So boxed corners, this is really fun and I hope that you guys can follow me. Again, this um, tutorial is free, it's in our crafters group, Crafters of the Curious and Divine, the link is below. You can go on there and get this uh, downloadable tutorial and whip some of these up yourself. Okay, so I am splitting my seam allowance in the corner. I'm gonna open them up and they're, it's gonna kinda like resemble a little like snake tongue or something. And I like doing it this way because you get a really nice corner and you can match the seam up on this side to the seam up, to the seam on the bottom, okay? And you do that by just like feeling it. You can kind of like, oh, there's it's stuck and that's where you want them to match, right? So if you have done this right, correct, this is what it's going to look like. Like I said, kind of like a little snake tongue. Um, two little triangles and you have this wonderful reference point, okay? And this is what you're going, this is the line that you're going to use as a reference point to make any sized box corner you want. So you can do an inch across, two inches. I'm doing two, so I'm gonna show you how I do it. Okay, let me lower this so you can see. So get your ruler to show your, your guide here. Something to mark with. And I'm taking my corner. I'm gonna place it down. And from here, I know it's a little awkward. You can press this really good before before doing your marks if you want. Okay, let me do it this way so you guys can see. Here is my corner with the two little tips. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna use one of these lines on that seam, which I was telling you um, is going to be my reference line. Now I want a two inch boxed corner and I don't know if you can see here so my seam my seam is gonna match up with that with the with the middle reference line and as you can see the two sides will match up exactly to two inches see there's two boxes two inches and my reference line is along that seam allowance okay that's where you're gonna make your mark. So again, using this line to match up on my seam, I'm putting it an inch in and that leaves me with a perfect two inch triangle. Okay, so make a little mark like that. Okay, and now I like to pull it back and put a pin down the middle. All right. This is what it's going to look like if you have done it correctly. Okay, so using that as a reference, that is going to be a two inch boxed corner. Okay, so you're going to go to the other four corners of your bag and make these marks to make the corners. Ba -ba -da -ba. 
like magic, if you have done that, this is what you're gonna have. You're gonna have four lovely marked corners. And you're gonna go ahead on your machine and you're gonna stitch down those lines. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Looks a little wonky, but it's fun. Okay, so let's give this bag some shape. I don't need my seam allowance measurement anymore. Does anyone sew on a really old machine? Um, what, what do you sew on? I'd love to know what you guys use, what you like. Um, what your preference is. I tend to switch a lot. You'll, I mean, obviously, if you've been watching me for a while, these different tutorials, I use a lot of different machines. Um, and I like them each. They all have their own personality for different things. And I really like to use this particular um, 1930s um, singer when I'm doing a more thick or like, you know, robust, difficult project in that way. Okay, so I really like to make sure that my corners are not going to fall apart. And like I said, I can't backstitch, so I just go over them twice. The line, forward once and back. If you are using a new machine and you can backstitch, do so. You kind of get into the swing of things using an old machine. You love your heavy duty singer? Yeah, see? Everybody's got a special brand or maybe just one machine that is perfect for them for everything they do. I don't know how I've acquired so many different machines over the years, but I really do appreciate each of them differently. Okay, moving my pins as I come to them. Hitting them is really bad. You're gonna break a needle. You could snap in half, fly at your face all sorts of things. I mean, really, I should be wearing safety goggles, you guys. It gets wild in here. Okay. Going back. I have done two corners so far of my bag. We are so close to being finished, guys. Thanks for hanging in with me. Please share me out if you like this. I am doing a new sewing tutorial. We're calling it our sit and sew every single month and we will be offering the PDF tutorial on how to complete the project with pictures and instructions on our Crafters of the Curious and Divine Group's file page. So I really hope I can see you guys in there and see some bags that you've made. So this is a lot of fun. I would love to hear what you guys would like to see me to sew. If you guys have any ideas, Four, four, three, two, what do you think I want to... Ooh, yeah, fancy. I know once you get started, you're like, ooh, I want this machine, I want this machine. I have a really neat singer um, that has these beautiful stitch cams. So the top opens up and you put these little discs in. They all have different, you know, fancy little zigzag or, you know, flowers or whatever. And it's really fun. It's very unique timepiece machine. Now you have all these digital buttons. It's a digital world. You can just press a button and you can get RV campers stitched in a row. I'm serious. My grandmother's new machine that I inherited um, does that kind of thing. All right. This is what it's going to look like when you sew your corner. So one two, three, four. They're all stitched on that nice line. Get your scissors and I want you to cut below your stitching. This is going to make for a nice crisp corner. Okay, do that to all four sides. to turn that um, air conditioner on high. It's so hot over here. Okay, with the four corners cut, you are going to go back to that liner where you have that opening. 
And I forgot to mention before, but you need to keep your zipper open before stitching around the edges. Otherwise, you cannot do the next part. You can, but you're gonna be sitting here trying to undo the zipper from the inside of the bag, and it's really, really awkward, okay? Reach in all the way through the zipper across to the other side, and then, ba -ba -da -ba, like magic, here's the reveal, guys. Well, almost, almost. We have one more step, okay? One more step, I know. I'm getting ahead of myself, getting excited. Okay, wonderful. You can use whatever instrument. I prefer Chinese, you know, takeout chopsticks. Um, this happens to be one of my grandmother's old bone tap um, or knitting needles. She did some beautiful lace work in her day as well. Okay, that's what your, that's what your boxed corner looks like. Okay, that's what it's gonna, oh, sorry, there's a, that's what it's gonna look like when you flip it out right. Okay, and you have those four. So you can use this now to make the corners nice and crisp and turned out, or you can use your fingers and, you know, go along like that. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like go back to the opening in the liner and if you for some reason are a little OCD about it you can ladder stitch this close if you don't want stitching showing but I'd like to just use a coordinating um, color and go right down the side of the hole here so you can press if you need to um, but this seems to have been pressed fairly well and it's just a little just a little awkward the way I'm holding it so there we go okay so it's open from here to here I'm gonna stitch right along the side and once again on my old machine my back stitching is flipping so you're probably if you're not if you're wondering what I'm doing when I flip my fabric around, oh gosh, what's that strange technique? She's, I've never seen that before. I'm just back stitching. It's really nothing that special. I just don't have that like woo button right here that all you cool folks with fancy new machines have. Well, I do have some, don't get me wrong. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna back stitch the end. Da, 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 da. I'm just gonna use my hand crank to do that. There you have it. Okay, so trim your tails. I make it look easy, thank you. It's taken a long time to make a lot of uh, the projects I do look easy, but this is, um, this really is a beginner um, project and like I said to make it a lot easier don't put in the zipper tabs don't do this part just sew your zipper in and don't do the boxed corners it'll take half the time that it took me to make this bag with you that I'm about to reveal and you'll have a lovely zipper pouch still okay so that's plain without the extra little tidbits that I added to the tutorial for you guys because that's how I like my bags. And those are some really good techniques um, to learn. You can use box corners for all sorts of bags. Um, and obviously, you know, little corner finishes, they really help to dress, dress your zippers up. Okay? All right. So I sewed that piece closed. Now you're going to take your liner and you're going to push it in. Like that and then get these little corners with your zipper tabs nice and crisp pull them push them out and ta-da you have a beautiful complete zipper pouch with these nice tabs and boxed corners so you can Stand it up. Oops, sorry, it's falling over right now, of course, when I'm, because I haven't pushed out that corner. There we go. Stand it up. Put your little toiletries in there. It's a beautiful thing, you know, whatever you want to put in, whatever your thing is. 
I'll put in next month's sit and sew project. Ta-da! Hope you guys love that. That is our project tonight, and you can, once again, you can find this free tutorial in our Curious um, Crafters of the Curious and Divine group. I did a P PDF for you exclusively to learn this, so join and make some really cool bags and show them off, all right? I would love to see what you're working on. Again, here's what it would look like if you don't add the extras in. It's just a very flat bag. But this is how I like them. You could add in like a little ribbon or a piece off the side and you'd have like a little, you could have like a little clutch bag. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do. I got to this point. It's lovely. Thank you so much. You hope to use a zipper. Do you have a zipper foot? All your machines should come with these different feet, okay? So I'm not... Um, doing anything crazy or new um, most machines that you purchase will come with all of this like variety of feet and I urge you to look into them they're super handy and they really help a lot okay I love this I don't know what I'm gonna fill it with um, I know we're gonna offer these in our shop and I think we're gonna send a little extra something something like one of our um, which we don't sell in our shop, one of our nice lip balms. We have some peppermint shimmer ones left, and I think that kind of goes with the summery version of the bag. Yeah, it came with all sorts of feet you've never used. See, get on that machine, check out the feet, use your zipper foot, watch your fingers, make some awesome bags and show them off to us. Join our crafters group, please. Share us out, share this video out to anyone who would like to learn how to make this easy project. One or the one or the other, couple different versions, and I hope you liked learning some new techniques with me tonight. Um, I will see you next month. I'm sure that I'll be doing live sooner because we have garlic coming up. Woo! If you guys loved our garlic braids, we're doing braids again this year. We're pulling garlic and it's hang drying right now. Um, what else can I share with you that's really exciting about um, our shop? We have got, they're coming back in stock. They went really fast. Children's Save Halloween masks, okay? They're really cute. And they've got these little peekaboo ghosts and stuff on them um, and very comfortable jersey ties um, for little ears. Um, I know everyone's worried about kids going back to school right now and we want to offer some very affordable, easy, comfortable face coverings. Um, I hope everyone's being safe out there. We do have other face coverings available in our shop right now. Um, and something I'm really excited about, I wish um, maybe Elisa can share a picture of her bag that she crafted for these beautiful chakra stones that we're gonna have in the shop soon. So this is my, this is my plate, I just have them laid out um, to show you. This set is going to be coming with a really beautiful rainbow crocheted pouch for, um, by Elisa, the crochet goddess at Root Stones and Bones here. And this is great for meditation. As you can see, I am using it on a crystal grid. Um, you can, you know, like I said, meditate with them. Um, you can use them for a lot of different things. They're a wonderful size. So you have one for each chakra. I don't know if you know anything about chakras. We haven't really done a lot of stone stuff, so maybe we should go into this on another live soon, huh? Um, so roots, stone, jasper, sacral we have sunstone um citrine uh celeste amethyst aventurine clear quartz it's a really wonderful set and it will of course be imbued with some lovely reiki energy for me personally to you and again i hope to get some of these bags listed with a little extra peppermint shimmer lip balm for you guys if you'd like to purchase one to take with you on trips hopefully you're not going anywhere now you can you know just pretend to get dolled up you're going out on a Friday night maybe that's what I'll do right now and um, I love you guys thanks so much for joining me share us out like us um, and get this free PDF tutorial in our crafters group I will see you guys 
again, probably with some fun garlic info coming up. All right. Good night, everybody.